Hello, this is Steve Ansel again. Um, in this project, I'm controlling four servos via an Arduino, um, which is getting this information from an application that I've created in a 2015 C Sharp WinForms project, um, Visual Studio, whatever you want to call that um, piece of software. In this one, um, what I've done, I've, you can see here I've got four control panels. Each one of these has got a slider. You move that one, it moves that first servo. Second one, this one here, moves that servo. Then I've got another one moving that servo. That one moves your last servo. They're all indexed zero to three. Um, I've also included a reset function which will put them all back to the centers um in the on, on the instead of like going through all these little wires here which will take ages and ages to explain um, um but in layman's terms all i've done i've just got a negative coming in from the power supply which is one of these macklin ones that you can power your raspberry pi with uh costs about 15 quid for Maplin. Um, well, that's how much I paid for mine anyway, or near to it. Um, quite an handy little one. It does one amp on one port, 2.1 on the other. I'm using the 2.1 in this case. Um, all the negatives from the servos are connected to the negative side. All the positives of the servos connected to the positive side via these orange wires. Black wires, obviously, are the zero volt negatives. I've then also connected another wire to that negative and connected that back to the Arduino. That's so that these four pins here, two to five, can actually reference against something to send a signal into these servos. Um, right, that part out of the way, I'll just show you the circuit diagram anyway. Um, right on the circuit diagram, I've got, as you can see, I've got um, the power supply, which plugs into the mains wall socket. Um, that goes uh, the negative side tethers onto that lead I just showed you which goes into the Arduino then you've got a positive wire going to each one of the servos um, I know it don't look like this on the actual reality but this is just simpler to draw this way and then you've got your yellow wires which go to your signals in each servo like starting with pin 2 through to pin 5 um, anyway, that's going to be in, in the description anyway, so you'll be able to download that and study it at your leisure. Um, getting back to this part anyway, um, I was going to come out of the app a second. Um, in, the, in the designer, all I've done, I've just created um, some four panels, give them all labels, the position label actually has got a piece of code controlling it, which changes that number. The code's the same for all four of them. Um, and yeah, going back into the into the designer anyway. In the designer, of um, if I go to the track bar, all I've done here, I've just gone into it, named it track bar zero, track track bar servo zero. I mean. Um, and then gone into its properties, into that little lightning bolt at the top, that little icon comes down here. This ain't actually a tutorial in Microsoft C Sharp, so I'll just keep this brief. Um, yeah, that one's also got a function called track bars of servo zero scroll. Um, and obviously when you double click that, it will then snap to that part there. Um, all this does where at the beginning of the initiation to lock off create the serial port created a function called init which means initiate um, I've set up the, the com port as 7 96 bode opened it that message box thing shows up if there happens to be a breakdown down in communication it will then moan um, and it will show you a, a, a dialogue box telling you that it don't like what you've done 
<coughs> and then I've got that function reset zero servos, which if I go down to the bottom, I've um, set up a variable called center position. Um, set all the values of each track bar, zero to three, respectively these ones here set their values to that centre position. I've also got that centre position and stuck it into that position label I showed you just now on each one of the panels, gave it the text position and then added the centre position to a string on the end of it. Then it loops through each one of the servos on the Arduino um, and it what it will do, it will it will just loop from zero to three here, and it will send the servo information down down the com port, down the USB port. Um, and if I can just find that um, function, so let's go in there a sec. Uh, go to definition. I've got this little function here, which. Um, takes in the channel number and position which is from 0 to 180 it creates a message string gets the channel number converts that to a string it adds on a semicolon which will then split up the two values it will then add it, what it'll do it will put this value in first semicolon then it puts the position after it and then an asterisk that's so the Arduino knows where the, where the break points are in that string as it comes down and then it writes that to the serial port. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, though, this ain't no C-sharp style. It's not a true tr tutorial on C-sharp. So I'd expect you to know a little bit, at least, about Microsoft C-sharp and some programming of some description relevant to that. Um now in the track bar, if I go back to this designer a sec, um, if I just go back here and then go properties and then go to where the scroll is, the scroll method for that track bar, I've got for each track bar one of these and all the changes on each one is at zero. Um, so what it does, it just sets up a variable, gets the track bar's value, stores it in that variable, Checks to see if serial ports open. Um, the label for that that position label showed you on the designer on the application. What it does, it will set the text for that as position plus the servo's position, and you convert that to a string to make it work on that. Um, and then you send the servo information. Um, obviously, if I go into here, go to, go to the definition, I've got this little function here, which will, as I said, I've just explained this before, it will take in, it will get called from the, uh, from the track bar um, method and call it like, and plonk the values. In this case, if it's servo free, it will put the free in and then the servo's position which is anywhere from 0 to 180 uh, and then it combines them as I said pokes it out of the, out through the pipe which then gets sent down the lead to the Arduino <coughs> um, uh, and that's that's about it for that part of the code I mean I've obviously got to reset servo positions as I think I've mentioned just now but yeah it just it just goes through all, all the servos and sends the servo info down to the Arduino to put them all to their centre positions. As soon as the application is actually um, launched, um, then there's one for the for the button, the uh, reset button. And I also do the same when the form close as the form's closing. If you go into the designer part again and click any right click in the blank space on the form go properties and go back here there's a method called form closing so it goes it will snap back to that so it just runs the same code as what the as what the button does at the bottom the reset button um, that's about it for the c sharp code i'm now going to go back into the 
Arduino code. Right, the Arduino code is pretty short and simple. I've just included the library for the servos. So servo library.h, well servo.h is not, it's got the word library in it. Um, I set up an integer for how many servos there are, and I've also set up a, an array bank of the pins I want to use, servo pins, and just put them in that direction, because I've got it sitting in front of me that way round, so I've just done it that way round. Um, you can do it whichever way you want, it'll still work. Um, then I've created four servo objects, set up the serial port to 96 bode, um, attack, I've uh, got a little function called attach servos, which if I go down here, I've got attach servos here, it will just loop through zero to the servo count, which is four, uh, which is four, but what it will do, it will break out of three. Obviously you see I've done a less than servo count on the for loop, so it'll go from zero to three. It will then access each one of the servo objects via its um, array, and it will use its attach method, and then it will attach the servo pin that corresponds on the index that the servo pins that I've actually stored in that um, in that array above. So it'll index that the same way as it'll index the servos. Um, they're numbered the same way round um, and then obviously I've got a loop now if you try compiling without the loop it will fail to compile that's a, that's a bit self explanatory anyway it's a bit obvious because like you need a loop for the program to keep going so that has to be there just trust me it needs to be there I'm not going to explain fully why but that loop just needs to be in that program and then I've used the serial event, which is also part of the Arduino's architecture. If you actually define this, this will automatically get, this part of the code will get automatically get run every time there's activity on the serial port. So every time there's a serial, a serial port data being sent or received, that part will get run. Um, and as you see, all I've done, I've just initiated a couple of integers, channel and position, um, which is that POS one now. And then what I'll do, it, I'll use this serial dot read string until. Now, originally, I was using just read string and trying to, uh, and even tried read on its own. I tried splitting up the, um, uh, the string myself on the other end on the C sharp end send it down character by character I tried sending it as a whole string and all that and I've got undesirable effects it kept jittering the servos at random and things like that uh, that was until I found out about this I mean um, what, what it was I posted a question on um, arduino.cc and there's this um, this member on there called uh, by the name of Paul S Big thanks goes out to him for um, pointing this one out to me that this is the best one to use. Um, as I said, on, on the other end, if I'll go back, I'll explain how this bit worked. This servo, send servo info. As I said, what you do, you, you get your channel variable, you combine it with a semicolon and then concatenate the position on the end then concatenate the asterisk, asterisk on the end. What this colon, semicolon will do, it will split up the channel and position so it can be understood the other end on the Arduino. And the, the um, asterisk could terminate it. So, uh, yeah, that will then get sent down the, down the USB to the Arduino. And then on this end, um, in the serial event, it will read... Um, characters from the serial port into a string until it reaches the semicolon and then it will convert that to an integer using 2 int and then store it into channel so that will be your channel number sorted then what it does again after that you then use that same read command again read string until so you use that until you read it until you reach the star 
convert that to an integer and then store it in POS for your position. As I said, that could be anywhere from zero up to 180 or whatever you decide to set those slider bars but, um, borders to, like the, the bounds. Then what it does, it then takes that channel number, uses it to select the corresponding servo in that array at the top what I created with four servos and then it will use it that, that servos servo objects right method and it will then pass the position value onto it which then sets the servo right that's about as simple as that gets for that part but as I said big thanks to Paul S again on the arduino.cc forum for pointing out the read string and till um, now I'm going to go uh, go back once more to the application like as I said like these all will set that um, the, each one of these servos correspondingly to its channel number they all they all move nice and smoothly no jittering I've got a reset button as I said if I click on just refocus that again if I, if I click on that little button there where it says reset all as soon as I do that they all snap back the position and I'm also going to show you the big finale like I'm going to set all these servos to another position again and right I'm going to go to the little close tab at the top the X and I'm going to point at the servos as soon as I click that X when you terminate the application they all snap back the position right that's it for this video feel 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 free to duplicate it and have fun. Thanks for watching.